Okay, just a whistle-stop tour of this little sheet that I've put together for you. This sheet is designed to help you keep the child at the centre of conversations about them if you have to have those conversations without them. So we start off by introducing the child. Hi, my name is. Put here the name that they prefer to be referred to rather than any full or formal name and add a photo, ideally one that they like, that they perhaps have provided to you of them so that you can keep them front and centre of your mind. Then we're going to have some basics like their favourite colour, animal. These are things that you can use to... Uh, uh, have as a way into conversations with the child but you can also use them to adapt resources for example by using their favorite color or animal to theme things that you might create for them. I love to talk about this is again a way of bridging stuff with the child if there is a topic perhaps a special interest or hyper focus that they are happy to talk about uh, for hours on end uh, note it here this is a great place to start if you're having those uh, awkward silent moments uh, uh, where you're not quite sure where to go but again also this can be used to help you to theme things for them. Top left, and very importantly, we are listing out a child's strengths. This is a child who may have been brought to you because they have got particular challenges, issues, diagnoses, labels, whatever. We want to forget about those for a moment and we want to zone in on the child's strengths and they want to be the key focus for us here. So let's writ them large. Um, we are then also going to think about this child and their motivations. What are their hopes and dreams? What are the big things? One day I want to be an astronaut. I hope to travel the world. Um, and then what are the tiny ones? I hope to make a friend. I really hope that I will make it through today. Um, they might not be big, big ones. So there's big dreams, the long-term ones, and there's the tiny ones. And these are both things that it's helpful to understand about child, get their motivations rather than always being driven by ours. And then what are the things that they're scared of? This is helpful. This can give us some context for some of the challenges and issues that we might see within the school day um, and can help us to avoid or manage certain things. So it's really, really helpful here to get a bit of an understanding of the things that fill them with fear. Conversely, the things that they love, the things that make them happy um, is a nice thing for you to have a bit of an understanding about. Make a brief note here. Um, this might be in addition to the things they love about. There might be just other things, passions, hobbies, interests, skills that we can use to bridge the gap with them and perhaps use in order to connect and work with them. Proud moments. What's made them proud or what's made others proud of them? Try not just here to list the traditional things that they might have got certificates or been recognised for in assembly and so on and so forth, but rather think of the little things that make a big difference in this child's life. Note them down, celebrate them, recognise them. And then we're going to think about this child's safe people, places, phrases, super helpful information for us to know. And again, can help us to understand a little bit more about that child's network of support um, and uh, where they might go in times of need. Phrases here, this is a big topic, um, but this is about uh, the things that a child might need to hear at times of distress. And again, can give us a little bit of a glimpse into the way that they think and feel. This might be a child who needs to hear things around physiology. They this will pass. You're not going to feel like this forever. Or who need reassurance that you're not going anywhere. It's all right. I'm right by your side. Um, whatever it is that that child finds helpful to hear, it's really super helpful to note here. And then finally, just a little note about communication preferences, because it's super easy to get this wrong and make assumptions about how a child will best work with us. Do they prefer to talk or to write or to draw or something else? If so, fill it in. Um, having an understanding of a child's communication preferences and noting that with them at, or, and about them at a time of calm can stop us getting it wrong at times of uh, more challenge. So I hope this is helpful. You might want to make your own version. But the idea here is that rather than just having meetings about children without them, we try to keep them at the centre of our mind. We get to know them a little bit more and we make them and things about them really part of those meetings, of those aspirations, of those interventions. I hope it's helpful. Do comment with suggestions, recommendations, additions, changes, etc. And if you're using something like this or indeed if you do use this I'd love to hear about it in the comments too. Thank you.